Happy Monday. We are going to be uh, jumping into Unit 3, Week 3 this week. Uh, we're going to build a little background today, quickly take a peek at our four objectives and genre for the week, and then we'll go through our short read, which is entitled Jewels from the Sea. Let's get started with building some background just so we know where we're headed this week. Our weekly opener is entitled Inspired Work. And so we're going to see that our essential question this week is what can people accomplish by working together? Boy, oh boy, if there's ever been a time where people have to work together, it's right now. As we battle through a pandemic and getting things done in a much different way, we really have to rely on others uh, for that teamwork. I know my family has really had to rely on each other for uh, just motivation and encouragement um, because we are not around our normal uh, family of, you know, other students um, and things like that. And so we have been working hard to be kind and patient with one another, which a lot of days is a pretty big challenge. Let's watch our video today, and this will help us know where we're headed this week. Inspiration. What can people accomplish by working together? When people come together, utilizing the unique skills and abilities they've developed, they can make great things happen. Whether it's constructing a house or putting a car together on a factory assembly line, it takes teamwork to get the job done. And long before a newspaper reaches its readers, a great many individuals have already contributed their talents to putting it all together. All right, so chances are you've had an opportunity to work uh, with someone. Maybe that's uh, back when we were in person, you had a group project. Um, but within our homes, within our daily lives right now, out in public, we have lots of opportunities to do the same. I want to quickly glance at our four objectives today. Um, as you know, I will teach those to you tomorrow in more detail. Uh, but we want to look for them already today as we read uh, Jewels of the Sea. Another great story, you're going to learn a little bit about uh, people, again, from another culture and how they work together. All right, our first objective this week is going to be summarizing. And we know that when we summarize, we put things into our own words. And summarizing helps us make sure that we are comprehending. Notice this is a comprehension strategy. When we summarize, we are not getting real specific, but we're telling uh, the basic idea of the story in our own words. Sequencing is going to be huge this week, putting things in order uh, and using those sequencing words first, next, secondly, um, in the end. So we will be watching for sequencing. Our genre this week, moving on to the next page, is going to be narrative nonfiction. Narrative nonfiction is going to be told by a narrator. Usually it's going to, uh, you know, show how they feel about it. And so when we're talking about this text feature, you're going to listen in our stories this week for the author's voice or tone. So how do they feel about the topic? All right. Um, you might even see those things expressed in the headings or titles. Is it sending off a positive vibe or is it something that they don't agree with? So make sure that you listen for those as we explore the genre of narrative nonfiction, all right? So it is, nonfiction means that it actually did happen, and this is going to be told by uh, someone in a narrative uh, type of way. Finally, prefixes and suffixes. Pre means before, so those little tiny groups of letters that come before a root word um, that help us know the meaning of it. So like re is to do again, or on is not. Suffix. Um, that comes at the end. So I-T-Y or T-Y is like the state of. So equality or equity um, is the state of being equal. Uh, your opportunity to make that text to self-connection. So when did you work with others to accomplish a common goal? One word of caution there. We've had some really vague answers like, well, I worked together one time to get a job done. Tell me more. Tell me details. Get specific uh, so that I know uh, what it was that you did. All right, let's get started with our story today. I am going to read it to you, and uh, it is entitled Jewels of the Sea. As you know, we're in our small book this week, 
Um, page numbers are going to be coming up here. We're starting on page 194. You can start taking a look at the yellow highlighted words, which as you know are going to be our vocabulary words this week. We will learn those more in detail tomorrow on Tuesday. Jewels from the Sea. What can people accomplish by working together? Read about the way one group of women improve their lives and their community. A life by the Sea. On their windswept island off the coast of Eastern Africa, the women of Zanzibar were living much as their ancestors had. They cared for their children and cultivated their gardens. They farmed seaweed from the ocean and gathered shells to sell to tourists who visited their beautiful homeland. I don't know about you, but this picture here looks like a place I would love to, love to visit. Some of the women worked long hours breaking rocks into gravel. Life on the Fumba Peninsula had often been hard for them. They made very little money, and some would say the women were impoverished. Look at that beautiful compound sentence. They made very little, comma, conjunction. Some would say the women were impoverished, but they had always managed to feed their families. The ocean had provided for them, supplying abundant fish and oysters for food and colorful shells to sell. However, gifts from the ocean were not limitless. In the early 2000s, the women began to notice that oysters were not as plentiful as they once had been. I think there we have identified our problem. In the early 2000s, what did the women start to worry about? They noticed that the oysters were not very plentiful. In fact, Zanzibar's oysters were being harvested faster than they could replenish themselves. Replenish, remake. Okay, so they can't, they can't replenish or, uh, you know, come back to. Uh, existence as fast as they were being taken. In 10 short years, the number of oysters had declined dramatically. The women worried about the uncertain future. Ooh, there's answer to that first question. Next heading, a fresh approach. The women began to look beyond the solitude of their isolated coastal villages for help. To start, they welcomed the interest of scientists who were studying marine life in the waters surrounding Zanzibar. With guidance from the scientists, the women would work together to manage the way oysters were harvested. They soon discovered they had the powers to bring oyster populations back to healthy levels. The women searched for solutions also unearthed another new idea. So unearthed, if something is earthed, it's grounded. If it's unearthed or not earthed, it's being ripped up. So they are going to bring about or bring up this new idea. The women had always discarded the oyster shells after removing the flesh, but visiting experts who helped communities sustain their resources pointed out that the shells could be valuable too. They offered to teach the women the skills needed for polishing the shells and turning them into jewelry. Before long, local residents and tourists were buying earrings, necklaces, and bracelets that the women made from shells. The income the women earned from selling jewelry was more than they had ever made before. It occurred to them that, with a little ingenuity, they had actually become business women, building on their success. The women believed they could do even more. They wanted to have control of their business, not to be like a sharecropper who owns no land and so keeps only a part of the harvest. It was suggested that they join forces to cultivate maybe pearls, also known as half pearls. These pearls are created when a bead or other irritant is placed inside a living oyster. The oyster coats the irritation with layers of a shiny substance called nacre. The nacre later hardens into a shimmering pearl perfectly suited for jewelry. This new product would also work well with the plans to restore the oyster beds. Four no-take zones were soon established for the oysters that would produce maybay pearls. There was only one problem. The pearls had to be cultivated underwater. Even though the women had lived all their lives by the sea, they did not know how to swim. So the next step for these strong-willed women was to learn to swim. I want to point something out right here. We were talking about the author's voice or the narrator's voice. Right here, you see this strong adjective, strong-willed women. The author or narrator is giving lots and lots of compliment here to these women. They didn't know how to swim. They were going to learn how to swim in order to be able to harvest these pearls underneath the water. Others in the village were impressed by the women's determination. Many joined them to help see the project through. The first harvest of Maybay pearls in 2008 was so successful 
that professional jewelers quickly bought up the gleaming harvest to make expensive jewelry. So their hard work, their determination is now paying off. Did it do that on the first day? By no means. In sixth grade, we can learn a lot from our characters here. Sometimes you have to do the unthinkable in order to protect your future. So if day in and day out, you are showing up for school, you are logging in, you're watching your videos, you have to think of what that's gonna look like years down the road. And then sadly, to think of the opposite of that. What if you do nothing? What if you're slacking in school? What is that gonna look like next year or the year after or years after, right? So important to be working hard to do the right thing, going out of our comfort zone. Last section here, toward new horizons. The women wanted to learn still more ways to improve their business. To do so, they would have to travel thousands of miles across the ocean. Just as learning to swim had been a first, leaving Zanzibar would be a new experience. But together they would go. In 2009, a small group flew to Newport, Rhode Island, in the United States to learn about designing and marketing jewelry. They met a master jeweler, jeweler who taught them how to wrap strands of fine silver wire into delicate designs around the Maybay pearls. They also met people who shared tips on expanding small businesses into larger ones. The women absorbed all this and brought it home with them. The women of Zanzibar still live on their beautiful island, but today there is a difference. By working together, the women have become powerful caretakers of local natural resources and created prosperity in their community. Their hard-earned productivity will continue.